in these facilities, you need to know your chain of command. There's the RN who is your technically your boss, your charge nurse, your supervisor. Though the DON hired you, your DON has to be an RN. Don't you know that? <laughs> and you are the charge nurse who's over it, who, who, who can walk at any time. That's how the LPN been your charge nurse for 10 years. But you got a new RN in the building. You start, you're over her. She has to listen to you. There's no seniority rule here. If I delegated, meaning I told you to do that, I am the one that's going to be responsible. But if you didn't do what I said, you are going to fall for it. If I said you put the oxygen on the patients if it's uh, if they fall off, and you don't do it, just like a kid that did not listen to their parents and they told them to do something, I uh, the RN is the mother of the beehive. She know more than the CNA and the LPN. And some of the RNs is already there. The DON is responsible in making sure that the nurses are doing their job. Which is why she has to be an RN. Huh? I was uh, in a situation where the CNAs wanted to fight me for telling them what to do. I'm like, I'm, that is my job to tell you what to do. I'm your charge nurse. Though you're going to have a set of uh, guidelines to follow on in your position, but you need to know what delegating delegation is. It's like, uh, for instance, I'm in an emergency situation. I, I know that your brain is capable of understanding what I said to do. And if I said put that oxygen on there even when I'm not around and you don't do it, you're going to get in trouble for it. They're gonna ask me what did you what did you do? Well, she signed this in service and ensuring that she was gonna do what I said. And she was in that room between this time and that time. I was doing CPR. He's more he's more my priority because you know you know he's a resuscitate and I'm the only nurse. And she didn't put his oxygen on when, and she could have saved him if she had did her job. So she's gonna to go to prison because she murdered him. So again, let's understand why we we need to put that oxygen on because without it, their bodies, the kidneys are going to feel it. The, the brain is going to send out that hormone for, to release the hormone epipotin and that's, that's in the kidneys. And it's going to send that to the bone. The bone is going to start producing immature red blood cells to compensate compensate for the lost oxygen because your oxygen is, is less than 95 and if it's critical just no percentage it, uh, 70 80 I mean we're going up now let's go down 70 60 50 40 30 20 and zero you're dead at zero you had those percentages in front of zero to get to give you time before that once you at zero you are gone how many CNAs have been in a position to where they didn't get that patient that oxygen because they pride was high and said I can't get no medicine and you killed them mm -hmm. so the red marrow of the bone right here is going to produce that is going to increase the blood volume. So this is a, a, a regular blood cell. Lasts 120 days. It holds a lot of oxygen. A lot of it. A lot. Well, at this point, uh, there's something preventing the oxygen from getting there. Why does this patient need oxygen? Well, maybe they have a COPD to where their alveolar sacs are blocked by something. Bronchitis, uh, where there's mucus. Uh, inside of the lungs, preventing that oxygen from getting through to. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna explain to you an alveolar sac and uh, like pneumonia, the fluid that it draws from the body itself to try to flush out that bacteria. Once that fluid reaches inside of that alveolar that membrane, it messes it up, and just like the platelets on your scab, it's 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 gonna cover it to prevent the blood from bleeding inside. You know, and that's it, it makes a brick wall. So part Part of those alveolar sacs or the part of that lung is destroyed and is relying on the rest of it to get its oxygen. So that person needs that cannula to keep it going. The body is a temple and it's so fragile. Some of these disorders, if I have thermophilia, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I right, get your name up, but it, if I bump my hand just like hitting, like just a little tap.
I could bleed to death. And y'all like to fight and don't know. You don't, you don't even go to the doctor. You don't know if you got it or not. And someone hit you and you bleed and hemorrhage on the inside from just a little small hit. That's why God said in his commandments, do not fight. Quarrel. It's, it's, it's a sin. Everyone in the in the in the hood world wanna take uh, status in how many bodies they got, but you though they blood was on your hand. You murdered just like Cain did his brother, and just like God punished him, he gonna get you. Okay, we're gonna do this um, activity where we're gonna show you what normal levels of blood in your in your plasma looks like in your vessels. Your blood doesn't just have just red blood cells it has everything it's the river of life it got the blood it got the white blood cells to get out pathogens it got the platelets in case there's a, a injury it's going to cl clot it up you have the electrolytes you got water you got the uh, nutrients that the food when you digest your food when it gets sucked in from the absorbed from those pixels gets absorbed from the intestines it goes directly into your blood vessels. And where does it carry it? To the tissues, to the organs to get nutrients. Your brain needs sugar. It relies solely on sugar. You got sugar in there. How do you think diabetes get clots? And when you um, do a blood lab, they take a sample in a tube and you, of your plasma. And you got different layers. And that's what they're looking at when they're trying to find there, if there's an issue that's pointing to these cells or doing it. If you have an infection, they're going to take a blood lab. They're going to look at the white blood cells. When you do that, that, that uh, taking a lab and circle it around, it separates. Your red blood cells will be in a particular portion. Your white blood cells are going to be on top of it. And on top of that, it's going to be your plasma. If you got too much red blood cells, this is going to say they have a, a breathing problem. Mm -hmm. If you got too many white blood cells, you're going to say this is an infection. I used to draw blood for the Crest Park here in Forest City. So I, I was the manager over it all. I drew it and I took it to the hospital. I know what I'm talking about. So your normal blood levels here in the normal blood slot, it don't look something like this. It needs to be like this. Normal. Okay. And there's a range for it. I am going to be worldwide. I'm going to go to the schools. I'm going to go to the prisons. I'm going to go wherever there's human beings living. And you're, you're going to, I'm saying, you need my program. All of you need to know it. It's going to teach the children. It's going to teach the elderly so that they can know when those nurses are doing something wrong. Y'all will be taking advantage of these elderly because they they older. And, you know, they, they, mm -hmm. I'm going to take it to your babysitters. They need to know this. Every It's going to be, I'm going to be Brianna AI. <laughs> Everyone must purchase my program. I'm going to go to the president. If you are a nurse already, you must, in order to keep your license, you need to take my program. Because the people who are in positions now, they're getting old. The baby boomers, they're getting, they're, they're better. About to be joined with y'all. Y'all are slowly dying, and you don't want to have to get unquality care. I'm teaching quality. What, how so? Not only with my skills, how to change a bed and make no wrinkles. Uh, you, you're every nurse is gonna know this because it makes sense. And starting from the children, they're gonna learn it. And when they get older, they're gonna say, "I want to be a nurse." They're gonna know this. Look at my program receipt. I'm going to have pictures throughout this video. And you read it. And, you, and we're going to have the kids come together. We're going to go to Chuck E. Cheese to the skating ring. And while they're sitting down, they're going to be learning, taking tests. And on their break, they, then they're going to skate. Of course, it's going to cost uh, some uh, money. To, that's a, uh, my kid program, kid CNA program. I'm teaching everyone worldwide how to be a CNA first. And then I go to the LPN. And then I go to the RN. You might want to be an RN. I'm going to teach you all of that. Order my program. So again, normal blood levels is here when your oxygen is between um, 95 and 100. When it's less than that, your body is going to kick in and say, oh no, I'm not about to die yet. It's going to go 
from that level to here because of that those immature cells are being birthed those new babies that's not even the new, the babies are trying to save you but that's too much for the heart eventually if you have this let's say this little dot here is the heart you got this part of blood flowing in okay and you got that flowing out eventually it's going to lead to heart failure you're going to die any kind of hypertension if it's not a, a, a aneurysm because of your weak vessels but it it's going to lead to uh it's going to lead to heart failure even the aneurysm is going to lead to a shock which is going to end your heart your heart is not going to work we're going to talk about the heart failure you got different types the left side and right side you're going to see those signs so what you signs are you going to look for if your patient is having a very difficult time breathing you're going to have distended neck veins when you look at their neck that they're already going to be, that they're those arms are going to be real thick. They'll let you know if in heart failure, you know, which side it is. If it's the the jugular veins, that's going to be, um, hold on. So if you have right-sided heart failure, you're the, the blood that's supposed to supply that, it's, it's so much. It's, you're going to look like you're swollen. That's let you know that's right side. If it's left side, it's going to, you have a breathing problem. They'll let you know it's left side. But they all going to run into each other. Because once that, it's going to, if you're starting the lungs, but you're not breathing, that left side is going to get clogged up because that, uh, uh, that the lungs is going to push that in to the left side of the heart. The right side takes the blood, or is, is the, where the veins shoots the blood in. And then, it has to go to the left side so it can come out. So if your heart failure starts with the, the left side, it's going to connect to the right side, which is going to make that stopper appearance. Because now we got blood over on this side, the, the right side here, and the left side, it came back, and it's going to crush that heart. It's not going to be able to pump. It's not going to be able to move a, 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 a valve. Heart failure. If your heart is not pumping, how are you living? So now that we got an understanding of how important we need that blood level to be at the right range, the oxygen at the right one too. Now we're going to talk about the lungs and how left heart, left-sided heart failure can kill you.